This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. We're going to get started very soon, so uh, I'd like to have everybody settle in and uh, so we can keep everything on time. Tony? And good afternoon, and thank you very much, and welcome to this 11th uh, Nathan Bass UCSF Liver Transplant Conference. Uh, thank you for spending a nice day here with us. And alongside me is Tony Bass. And Tony Bass would like to start, uh, uh, say a few words, and uh, again, welcome to this conference. Thank you, Francis. And I just want to uh, firstly echo Francis' uh, words to everybody and welcome you all to this, the 11th annual uh, Nathan Bass UCSF Liver Transplant Conference. Um, I want to offer my thanks and, of course, my admiration to Francis and Peggy Millar. I know how much work is involved in putting this together, even and now it's become a bit of a fixture, and or, you know, you think, well, that should make it easier, but it's, it's a lot of work. And once again, Francis and Peggy have done just an amazing job in organizing this 11th update that I'm extremely proud and honored to remain associated with. So, Francis, thank you very much. And, Peggy, thanks to you as well. And I want to give them a round of applause for that. Now, I know as you all anticipate correctly, this is going to be an amazing learning experience with an excellent lineup of speakers and topics. You know, what's going on right now in hepatology is just amazing. It continues to be game-changing, not only hepatitis C, but hep B in the developments in the NASH world, management of portal hypertension. It's just really a very exciting field with all these new changes coming along thick and fast, and I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot about that as we go on. And I wanted to take uh, a moment of your time right now just to pay tribute to a dear friend and colleague who was a regular attendee at these updates and a great supporter of the UCSF liver transplant team and liver activities. And I'm referring, of course, to Leon Kaufman. I think I have a picture of him there. Um, and Leon uh, unfortunately passed away after a long battle uh, with cancer on October 5th, just over a month ago. So I'd like to share uh, with you some aspects of Leon's life, and I'm grateful to Cynthia Morton and Jim Allison and to Kenny Bishop for providing me with many of these details. So Leon was born apparently to humble circumstances in Montreal, Canada in 1938. Um, he went to university at McGill where he graduated uh, in 1959 with honors in biochemistry and then subsequently got his MD at uh, uh, McGill Medical School graduating in 1963. And this was followed by his internships and residencies at uh, Jewish General Hospital in Montreal and Michael Reese Hospital in Chicago uh, between 1963 and 1966. Uh, he then came out west and came to UCSF, where he spent about uh, three years doing research into porphyrins with Rudy Schmidt. And I understand he was very good at this, but he was not seduced by laboratory research. And I think those of us who know him could understand that. What we might find surprising knowing Leon as we, as we certainly did was that when he left California and research in the lab, he went off to New York again where he entered private practice in internal medicine on Park Avenue. 
And of course, as I say, we'd not be surprised knowing Leon to learn that this life was definitely not his cup of tea, and he returned to California in 1973, where he started up work at Kaiser in Oakland. And Kaiser and his immersion in the local diverse community there was really a good fit by all accounts. Now, in 1981, I left the Royal Free Hospital Liver Group to come to California and start my life here. And it's amazing, shortly after I left, Leon took a sabbatical of three months to go to the Royal Free Hospital and spend uh, three months there with Sheila Sherlock in the liver unit. And he was fascinated and amazed by the group there, and particularly by Sheila Sherlock. And this probably explains why thereafter he became such an Anglophile, and that may have under, uh, underpinned uh, the wonderful relationship that Leon and I subsequently developed. Um, he became the Liver Transplant Advisory Board Chairman for Northern California Kaiser. And he held that position from its inception in the early 1990s until his retirement. In his capacity of the chair of that advisory board, he worked very closely uh, with the UCSF liver transplant team, and that included the uh, almost 20 years that I got to know Leon and the 10 years that I worked as medical director. And he was uh, notable for the way in which he promoted the relationship between Kaiser and UCSF as a true partnership. It was a true pleasure to work with Leon, as well as always very entertaining. He was a lovely man, a good friend, and he was passionately devoted to our common goal of doing the very best for the patients under our joint care and stewardship. Now, Cindy Morton, who worked closely with uh, Leon for many years, shared with me her fond take on his qualities as follows. She said, Leon was the master of the big picture of medicine and the succinct note, everything of importance in one line. He enjoyed his patients, always honing in on the important parts of their lives, although he was quite private with his own. And I think most of us will always remember his eloquent, nah, with which he quickly dismissed all pedantry and over-inflated opinions. Now, although he was quick to share his consistent skepticism with us, Leon was far quicker and far more effusive in sharing his enthusiasm. And he was open in his praise for anyone he thought had done a good job. He encouraged, uh, encouraged all of us to do our best and then to go on and do better. And in that way, he was the perfect mentor. And many of us who knew him and worked closely with him credit him with that role in our lives. Leon, on a personal note, had a great love of life and a broad and amazing range of avocations that he pursued with his usual enthusiasm. He loved history. He sat in on classes at Cal for many years, uh, studying that particular uh, discipline, especially as it pertained to art and medicine, and he loved collecting old medical instruments. I wish I'd known that, because I had a lot to give him. And of course, he loved anything British. He left behind his three admirable children and his bonsai trees. Just a couple of weeks before Leon passed away, he joined Jim Allison at a Raiders game where he was given VIP treatment. He had, by all accounts, a great time. And finally, this picture was taken in one of our earliest liver updates here in Napa. This was in 2006, and he attended almost every single one of these updates subsequently as an enthusiastic participant. We will miss him greatly. Thank you very much again for your attendance. And uh, I know this is going to be a very rewarding program. So on with the show. And Francis, back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Tony. Um, I remember Leon as a uh, very tough leader a gentle giant um, who's never afraid to tell us what we can do and how we can do better. And all these years, he has been a great supporter for us, and uh, we really uh, miss a great deal. Uh, we miss him a lot. So, OK. All right. So. Um, Going on to <clears throat> the program, um, 
really excited about the lineup that we have. And uh, again, welcome. I want to thank Peggy for another year doing a fantastic job. It's getting harder and harder, but Peggy has been wonderful to work with. Uh, let's give, give her a, a round of applause. Um, so our program objective is really give you an up-to-date information on specific liver disease entities and issues that are relevant to liver transplantation. And uh, we clearly see an explosion of new information the last few years. And uh, equally important, we'd like to know more, you to know more about the liver transplant program UCSF and the people that we work with every day. And we really uh, value your evaluations and the feedback. I'm doing, going to do th something differently this year. I'd like to uh, uh, recognize a few people within the UCSF transplant team uh, who has uh, at least 20 years of distinguished service to UCSF transplant. And uh, Lori Carson, are you? Stand up. Lori is the uh, liver transplant manager now, and before this, uh, she has been devoted many years into the HIV and transplant program at UCSF, and uh, really has been instrumental for the success of the program. Unfortunately, Barbara Moore is not here. Barbara Moore has been working as the uh, uh, pre-transplant coordinator for all this time, over 20 years and uh, she's wonderful, and many of you know her and talk to her. She's like the first person you contact with sometimes regarding your patient, so, so she's done a great job. And Anna-Marie Torres, is Anna-Marie here? Oh, uh, Anna-Marie uh, has been working with me as the pre-transplant coordinator for, for a long time. Before that, uh, she was with uh, kidney transplant, and she's taking on a new challenge, and and uh, taking on a new role as the life donor nurse petitioner. And she uh, got her MP while working as an RN. And, and Mike, are you here? Mike, very close, 18 years, okay? <laughs> so in two years, Mike Jagovic, yes. So yeah, I, 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 I asked you about it. So, so uh, in two years, you have that distinction. Great job, Mike. Um, I just want to mention a few new additions or new positions. Um, as I mentioned, Anna Marie Torres uh, will be the uh, life donor uh, nurse petitioner, and Jennifer Kearney took on the position as the post-transplant coordinator for the adult side, and Lisa Gallagher is the pediatric nurse petitioner. Are they here? Okay. All right. All right. And uh, so we have uh, new transplant coordinators. Uh, Anne-Marie Pecan, we're now calling her Annie, so that we don't confuse Anne-Marie with Annie. So she's the new uh, adult pre-transplant coordinator, and Natalie McGowan is going to be the inpatient adult coordinator. And uh, Carolyn Light took over. Oh, yes, Natalie. Natalie, stand up. Okay. And uh, Carolyn Light, um, uh, took the position as the Director of Transplant Clinical Operations uh, from Amy Peel, who has retired. Uh, CME, um, the online CME site will be available at the end of this meeting tomorrow afternoon, and it will uh, be open until December 15. Um, so you need to get into, you know, do the evaluation so you can get uh, the CME certificate. Uh, after that day, we will have to close the uh, CME site. And uh, you can get it printed, and you can get the uh, CME credit immediately. Um, and if any question, you can check with me or Peggy, and uh, it should be in your package. Uh, we are really indebted to our sponsors for the generous support. Uh, without them, uh, we would not be able to uh, have this conference. Uh, the platinum sponsors are Novartis, Gilead, and Salix, the gold, Estellas, Silver, Genentech, uh, BMS, Onyx, Janssen, FV, and Avila. And I would really strongly encourage you to talk to the people there during the break. Uh, you know, it's really important uh, to get to know them, and uh, uh, they're really our supporters. And let's give them a round of applause as well. 
so <clears throat> the lineup for today, the uh, program we will talk about live donor liver transplant, uh, address very important issues related to improving organ distribution, uh, HCC, portal pulmonary hypertension with our guest speaker, Van Selby. We have a break and we'll follow the tradition of having a debate. We have two hepatologists debating each other. Uh, instead of surgeon against hepatologist. Uh, we talk about portal vein thrombosis, liver disease in pregnancy, and uh, what's new in hepatitis C. Uh, we have reception at six o'clock at the fairway deck, and then we have our seafood buffet dinner at seven. And then tomorrow we kick off uh, with a continental breakfast, same place, fairway deck, and then we have two different case presentations. And Kimberly Everson is our pathologist. Is Kim here? Okay. All right. And then we also have a pediatric uh, hepatology breakout session that will start tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock uh, with uh, Phil Rosendahl, Sue Ray, and Emily Perito, and Yen Fem. And uh, it will be in the Behringer Chevrolet room. Um, that will start at 9 o'clock tomorrow until noon. Um, the mission of the UCSF transplant program is to really provide highest quality of specialized care in patient liver disease and to try to advance the field of liver transplant through research and clinical experience. Uh, do you know we have a big team and everybody is important. Uh, you know, I would talk individually about different people as they come over to talk, but we really have a fantastic team. Uh, dysfunctional family, but everybody like each other. Uh, we have 13 transplant hepatologists, nine adults, four pediatric. We have a same group of surgeons for a long time, over 10 years, eight of them. Uh, four pre-transplant coordinators, one inpatient coordinator, two inpatient nurse practitioners, three post-transplant nurse practitioners, one physician assistant, and uh, the number of uh, nurse practitioners for hep C will grow. Uh, one pediatric nurse practitioner, four dedicated social workers, and also one independent life donor advocate. Uh, it takes a multidisciplinary effort for us to do what we do, particularly on the inpatient service, you know, managing very complex, very sick patients. So we have a big team and a number of our fellows, hepatology fellows, are here and uh, we incorporate the team with GI fellows in training, interns and residents, and uh, everybody counts and uh, we need a multidisciplinary a teamwork in order to make this work. Uh, we have dedicated anesthesia team. ICU team has been wonderful to work with. They help us with ventilation man management and uh, fluid management. So it is an open ICU and I think that is a critical part of the inpatient service, and we also have a transplant infectious disease consult service dedicated to our problems. Uh, we are very proud of our results. Just give you some uh, idea about the transplant program. We are doing you know, anywhere from 140 to 150 transplants a year. That number has been pretty steady, and we anticipate that we'll do probably around 150 or more this year in 2014. And so we are the largest uh, transplant center, one of the largest in the country and the largest in Northern California. Uh, we're very proud of our results. Uh, we don't have any updated data from SRTR, but UCSF has better than expected graft survival, one in three years in 11 consecutive periods, dated back to July 2005. UCSF has better than expected patient survival at one in three years in six out of 12 periods, and last five consecutive periods. And no other centers in the country out of over 120 programs have done as well. And this is showing you one in three year graph survival. In 11 out of 12 periods, we're better than expected. Uh, none of the other centers in the country, you know, uh, seem to be close to what we're able to do. And uh, I think we have great surgeons to to produce these great post-transplant outcome, but I think the hepatologists are pretty good too. Um, so uh, our wait list mortality since 2005, better than expected in 10 out of 12 reporting periods. And uh, just uh, bragging a little bit, we are doing very well. Um, so uh, so we, we're able to, you know, as I said, you know, team effort allow some of the really sick patients to be bridged to liver transplantation. Um, 
And I think that uh, you know one thing I should mention is that uh, we are not like just uh, transplanting you know straightforward cases. Our uh, ability to take on tough cases, patient with portal vein thrombosis, retransplants, and all that, really reflect the expertise and the ability of our surgeons. And uh, you know one of our you know, major area of focus for growth is a life donor transplant program, and this is very clear on our agenda. Because patients, we're losing patients on a waiting list, they have to be transplanted sicker and sicker, so the life donor program is really important, and uh, uh, we have uh, really a robust life donor program for both adult and pediatric um, uh, transplant services. So we're not able to do what we're trying to do without the support from the community, and again, I want to thank you for the support all these years. And uh, certainly, we recognize that we can do better in terms of communication, in terms of providing patient care. And so, I want to be available for you to call me by pager or cell phone or email. And then there's a 24-hour number that you can get hold of any one of us, hepatologists or surgeons on call, or the coordinators, and the number is here. That's 24 hours a day. We're trying to expand our outreach program. We already have outreach program in Fresno, Modesto, Santa Clara, and now we have Reno and Fremont. So we want your feedback and try to bridge the gap with the community, and your support has always been, we're very grateful for all your support. Thank you very much.